Musical Talk, the UK independent musical theatre podcast. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Musical Talk. My name is Nick Cutson. This week, you're going to be hearing a review of The Time Traveller's Wife that Andrew Keating and I saw at the Apollo Theatre. So, without further ado, let's go back in time to when I saw the show with Andrew as we share our thoughts. Hello, Andrew. We are here at the uh, Time Traveller's Wife, which is that rare thing, a new musical based on a book and a film, musical lyrics by Joss Stone and Dave Stewart. Of the, from. Sorry? From. 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 The Rhythmics. Yes. Um, we went in knowing very little about this. It's not page. a jukebox musical either. No, it's Is that not, what you're going to say? No, no, it's it's a, it's a full. Because it's, it's not like a rhythmics jukebox musical. Well, it took virtually at one point, didn't it? But um, uh, there is a nod, isn't there? Is yes, there? there is a nod. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But um, we went in with this musical not knowing anything about it, didn't we? I don't, I, we no. can read. First, we'd like to point out we can read. We 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 sometimes read novels. Yes. I haven't read this novel. No, I know there was a film of it a couple of years ago. It's a newish novel. Um, we can also go to cinemas and see films. Yes. Was there a film of it? There was. Oh, um, we've managed to completely avoid anything about it. And I don't, is, does that make us very unusual? Is that I don't know. I don't know. Um, we'll see how the show goes down one, in its um, for the run. But I'm I'm enjoying it more than I thought. But I'll get on to my thoughts in a bit, Andrew. What are your thoughts? It's got magic tricks in. Nick. Talk about those. Yes. It's got magic tricks. The songs are fine. Yeah, it's what They're everyone's fine. saying. The songs, the lyrics are verging on clunky, but that's what you get when you get pop songwriters writing musicals, and that's been a long bugbear of mine. Can we stop that, please? Um, that's very harsh. It's right. true, but they just they don't rhyme properly. But anyway, that's a discussion for the time. The bigger issue I have with the music is it's a great, it's a blessing that this. To be given this story is a blessing for a composer because you're suddenly given the ability to write in all these different eras. And we don't get that in this show, apart from one point when we go to the 80s. Oh, I should have guessed you'd be thinking that. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true, because they do make a point of uh, trying to orientate you as to what, what year you're in. Not always, completely, but they, would, they do mention a couple of years and then you're kind of trying to work out, OK, well... Where are they in the 80s, the 90s, noughties? Where are they now? But musically, there's no 60s you sound said in the, the 60s. You the same about Stephen Ward. You just, oh, they Probably. didn't do enough 60s songs. Well, there was, there was a bit of a 60s stuff in, in Stephen Ward. Um, I don't more hold so it against than this. you, but I, but I kind of do. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but it's a very interesting story, and that's what I am enjoying about it. The staging is excellent. We're firmly in ghost territory here. Which Dave Stewart also ah, did. Bring on some leap territory. <laughs> yes, but the staging is very similar to Ghost, also a Colin Ingram production. Very firmly in Back to the Future territory here, as regards the staging. Um, but it's not as it's not as dare I say it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. But I don't know the film. My friend does. Or the she, novel. Or the novel. My friend does know the novel, and um, she said to me they have cut huge swathes of detail out right. from the book. Okay, this is this is my impression of like kind of coming into it without knowing the source material. Right. In some ways, that's that's a blessing because you yeah. can be completely uncorrupted by any other version. Uh, but it's. <laughs> You can tell, I think, that they've had to, they've had to condense a lot. Yeah. Actually, the the first the first kind of first that's what about an hour, but they they they're cramming so much maybe into that first ten minutes. The idea that concept he's kind of, of the whole concept of it that actually it's just like vroom 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 yeah. vroom 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 vroom, and that that makes it maybe if you already know the yeah, the story or the working. source material, yeah. yeah that actually you, you can kind of just think, oh, it's just this is how they're bringing that, that to life. If you don't know any of it at all, thinking, God, this is going quite, this is going quite a lick. Yeah. It's going at quite a pace because they don't necessarily have the time to hugely develop things. Do you know, and I'm going to say it, right? Again, not knowing the source material, one reading of it is old man travelling to see little girl. 
which is a bit like... The, there is a, that slightly. It's, it's not a grooming musical, no. but... But why... It is what, an older man How and why is he time-travelling in the first place? It's never really brought up. I well, I guess know. you don't ever need to in time you travel. You don't need to know. It's like, how it does Doctor Who travel through time? It's just a conceit. Maybe we do know in a second. Mm. We don't know. We don't know if we don't know. Now, let's talk we about... Let's talk about the magic. But don't you think? No, don't talk about magic. But sometimes it's an issue where you've got, like, a, something really big that you have to condense yeah. and get in. That's, and it's that's like Lord of the Rings. Hard to do. When we saw Lord of the Rings a thousand years ago, Tim, sitting next to me, just laughed and he whispered to me, they've just cut an entire battle out. But you have to. If, I know the book oh, is very long and Nobody cared and about the battles. They were just there for the wind machines. And hair dryers. Yeah, and hair dryers, and you shall not but pass. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely and get like things, Was it orcs on pogo stick? Were it orcs? I don't know what yeah, they, they were. Goblins, they whatever, were, whatever, whatever it is. Dancing around. That's but yes, yeah, so you do have to cut huge sections out. But I think the story's I'm been not told. Saying, I'm not saying cut things out necessarily, but you have to condense. Condense, yeah. You have to condense and simplify. It's been told very well. The staging is beautiful. Let's talk about the magic. Um, obviously, because he does have to... Henry don't, don't does have to, he, he does have to disappear and very, I won't but there are very clever ways of doing it I look forward to seeing what they do yes. later on a bit of a a shock moment at the end of Act 1 which was um, don't spoil quite it. nice but um, yeah I'm enjoying it it's, it's nothing we haven't seen before as regards if you've seen Ghosts if you've seen Back to the Future you've certainly seen this kind of show but it's a kind of show I like um, it's not a massive sing-songy musical, though, is it? It's not... You know, the first applaud didn't happen until about 30 minutes into the show, which is fine, because it just moves what so quickly. What was the song we did like? I liked them. I, I do... Was. I'm enjoying the songs. I just wish they... As I said, I wish they had more stylistic variation to represent the era that we're in. One day. Yeah. Was it One Day through that? Was That was kind of which like the of that one song. One it? Day is also a song from... Oh, no. um, one day, one, a groundhog one day. One day more. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's not many songs in it, as you said. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it very, very much, and it's nice. It's a new show. Um, it's not a jukebox musical. There are a lot of those, and you know, every day one seems to get announced. So let's make our way. And back it's got in. it's got a, it's got a Jesus in. Yes, Jesus is in it. Time traveling. A, a time time traveling Jesus. Jesus. David. No, Hunter. David Hunter. He wasn't Jesus in the end, was he? In Superstar. He was nearly Jesus. Was he nearly a Jesus? I can't betrayed. remember how far up. No, I can't remember how far up the run in he was. Um, but okay, that seems like a very long time ago now, yeah. doesn't it? It was two thousand years. It wasn't. It wasn't and Joanna Woodward is very good as the lead girl, and it's a lovely ensemble. Um, cast, isn't it? They all sort of play different versions and older versions of themselves and uh, the the, um, the yeah, but then child that, is very good. But then you've got that supporting couple. Yeah, so the comedy couple. Yeah, not really. So well, like Sharice and Gomez. Yeah. And actually, again... Oh, Tisha and Gomez. Because, again, because they've got condensed so much, they don't get enough to do. You get a glimpse of, of, of what they could be. But, but it's, as regards to structure and watching it, it's very exciting because they say, oh, I've just been nine years into the future. We might not see that scene until later. So it's kind of fun seeing this story told in fragmented parts. That's an aspect of it I am enjoying. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens in Act 2, Andrew. So Act 2 of The Time Traveller's Wife has ended and uh, I thought Nick we just left in tears. We oh, just plodded along as it started, really. What, what do you think, Andrew? There is, well, trying to be relatively spoiler-free, yeah. there's, there's an opening number in Act 2 which is channeling a lot of Eurovision. That's all I'll say. Yeah, someone else, musically. Someone else said it was like a music video that we saw. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Front projections, yes. Back projections, yeah. And side projections, and people doing things. I don't know. Are we meant to see them, or are we not meant to see them? Because I think they could have I, done I that a bit better. No, I think um, one of the things is you probably, you probably. I mean, we we were quite Close. central front stalls. Yeah, you probably would benefit from being slightly further back. Uh, but I think if they covered their, this will all make sense, listener, once you see it. But if they covered their faces. It would be a lot more effective, I think. I think we're meant well, to what, see... Well, if you look less closely. True. Maybe but it's your fault. Well, was that the highlight for you? Because that's the moment that lots of reviews have picked up as being, like, really, really well done. 
Was that one of the highlights? It's very well done. Yeah. But you know I'm a sucker for a projection. I love a nice projection. It's very... I could just sit there the, and watch projections. The whole... Be quite just happy. did. The whole we show is very did. ghost-like, though. Did you see Ghost? No. <clears throat> Musically, again, it was Dave Stewart doing Ghost. Um, a lot of ballads, a lot of kind of, this is going to end up sad. Um, I did like that one big ballad. <laughs> I'm not very good with song titles. But there was, there was the yeah. big ballad, which sounded a bit like... You know the opening of Evergreen? What do you mean? Till I, till I hear you sing. Oh, I suppose that does sound like it as well. Yeah, that. It channels a little bit of that. I like that one. I think there are too many ballads, so there needs to be much more variation within the score. But there it's isn't. Not, there's not too many ballads. There needs to be probably a bit more variation in the yeah. score. Yeah. But um, Shall I, oh, this one sounds like the other one. Oh, it sounds like the one before. Yeah. But it's well staged. I like the magic. There's a very, very good trick near the end of Act Two. Um, They're which, two very good leads as well. They're yes, two, they really do yes, they give really it their work very hard. They um, and uh, yeah, it's just a very, very quite a moving piece of theatre. The people around us liked it. Someone said upon leaving, "I love the film, but I really, really enjoyed that production," um, which is you know. I love the film. The only thing is, though, it's a bit, it's a bit like she's. I don't, want to give the, I don't want to give the plot twists away, well, but then people can, probably have yeah. seen it, haven't they? But it's a bit like, well, you know, he's a time traveller, so it's a bit like, you we know... We say what the story is. It's about this couple that um, the husband... Um, it's, about, it's about time traveller's wife. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and time traveller. It's about time traveller's wife. But and it, their friends. And who aren't time travellers. It's kind of like, how do they live with this and the, the things that... Are how does he keep down a job? They didn't answer that, did they? He works in a library. It's just like, well, how do they... How do they road to him on shifts? They don't know what, what, when he's going to be there. Is he going to be 10? Is he going to be he go on 48? Coasters, what's, he going to, what's he going to be? Um, he doesn't know. He doesn't, he doesn't go on planes, no. roller coasters, or drive a car. What a dull life you must lead. But he does time travel. Well, you would say that. Yeah, you were a roller coaster fan. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just sort of, very, I very much enjoyed it. Very theatrical. Very, um, you know, it does all the stuff that theatre's meant to do. Just wish, as everyone's saying, just wish the songs were better. Is that what you wish? It's what I wish. If I were to go back in time, I would not get Joss Stone and um, Dave Stewart to do the songs. I don't even know what year it is anymore. I don't know. Are we recording this after the show? Is it before the show? Uh, is it five years into the future? I, I have no concept. Anyway, Andrew, thank you so much. We'll thank let you. the theatre shut up now, but... Um, off and off home we go disappear in a flash of light goodbye oh i'm back hello um yes so that was our review of the time traveler's wife playing at the apollo theater i have had time to think about it and sleep on it and it's such a shame that um once again the pop songwriters are writing musicals because I just don't think they stand up very well to the art form, really, if I'm going to be fussy about it. The Time Traveller's Wife, as we said in the review, is an excellent concept, novel, film, series, and it could be a brilliant musical if they got a musical theatre writing team who knew what they were doing, who were able to take us to these different eras with the musical sound. And apart from the 80s, which Dave Stewart is very familiar with, obviously, they don't really do that. It's just piano, strings and guitar and a, a bit of rock occasionally. But do go and see it. Do form your opinion. Maybe you'll love it. Maybe you'll hate it. That's what's lovely about theatre, isn't it? Everyone has their own opinion. New musicals are always exciting. We love covering them here on Musical Talk. The next new musical I'll be seeing is the adaptation of Roald Dahl's The Witches. I love Roald Dahl and I have waited so long for this musical to um, appear, not only in my life, but ever since it was announced that The National were doing it. So join me soon for an episode discussing that. Until then, take care. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Musical Talk. To find out more about the world of Musical Talk, you can visit our website at musicaltalk.co.uk, where you'll find all our episodes, or you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. Please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Musical Talk. <laughs>